I'd like to share to you with you today a special prayer uh, to me. Um, it's called the Serenity Prayer. You may have heard it, but you may not realize that there is a full version of the Serenity Prayer. There are more words than the simple three lines that most people recite. There's more to it. And I would like to share it with you. God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will. So that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you in the next. That was written by Reinald Niebuhr. And uh, that prayer is really special to me, very important to me. Um, I once took the prayer, and I, for a couple weeks, I just focused on one line of the prayer. And it was, uh, you know, I just read it and uh, meditated on it a little bit and thought about it throughout the day. And it was very amazing, uh, very impactful, the many events that took place that day and how it uh, reflected back on just one of those simple lines. Those lines are so powerful. For example, living one day at a time. Where does that phrase, one day at a time, come from? Well, it comes, I'm pretty sure it comes from this prayer. And enjoying one moment at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. So often we are focused way off in the future, or way in the past. You Way off in the future and anxiety are way in the past in our regrets. And we miss the moment that could be enjoyed right now if we just focus on it. How is this moment right now? How is it right now? It's not too bad, is it? We can enjoy it right now. I think about other lines in the, uh, in the uh, prayer. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will. I think that is so true in our life that God will make all things right if we surrender to his will. And uh, I know, well, yes, there's still pain and suffering and dying, but even in the midst of that and through that, all things will be made right. We just surrender to his will. In that next line, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life. So many people are cynics, are preach doom and gloom. But is it possible that we could be reasonably happy in this life? This prayer is a prayer of hope. And I believe it, that we can be right now, be reasonably happy. But there's one big thing, the reason why I think of this prayer, one line in this prayer that really the reason why I talk about it and I think about this passion of what Jesus did for us. Accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Isn't that what the passion is all about? Isn't that what Jesus did for us? He accepted hardship as a pathway to peace. Hardship. So often, we do not accept hardship. 
We think pleasure is a pathway to peace. Not always, not even really at times. Jesus in his life would rather accept suffering and death instead of perpetrating any violence against us. I know you think, well, what am I implying? You're, you know, uh, I'm not saying that we don't defend ourselves. But you know, even in those things, we have to look and discern. Is this self-defense or is it retaliation? Uh, I think uh, this true story about this guard, and he was a guard at a house of children that were abused and that they, the children were there to be treated. And there were teenagers there, and they would go to the guard, and they would beat up the guard. But the guard would never retaliate. He told them, I don't know what you're doing. Just like Jesus' words, he realized and told them, you don't really realize what you were doing. And that was one of the first times in their life these children, these teenagers experienced love. And it changed them. Right now, the world is going through much suffering. And it's so beautiful because so many people are accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. They are willing to quarantine themselves as opposed to get anyone else sick. Accepting hardship as a, pe as a pathway of peace. And I think about it, you know, the challenge. What are the things we could do uh, what are the hardships we could accept to bring peace in this world if we just accept that hardship? I know maybe we're thinking about the big things, but really it kind of, it's really the little things, the everyday little things that make the difference. And right now, being in close quarters, uh, you know, so easy to get annoyed and frustrated and uh, act out against our own family members you know, to annoy one another. And can we accept hardship to bring about peace? Can we really put our forth, put a forth and, and be good and loving, you children? that are fighting, are us parents, are us who are older, to do those things, those little things. We talk about love a lot, but we don't take the actions, do we? We talk a good game, but love is about taking the actions, and we don't take the actions because it doesn't always feel good. Well, you know what? It's only after we take the actions of love that we feel good. Never get to that unless we're willing to take the actions of love, unless we are willing to take hardship. And there's so many things that we can do to be loving right now, the little things for each other, for our spouse. To be willing to be proactive to take the initiative and do those little things. What a difference that can make. Jesus accepted hardship as a pathway to peace. We accept hardship to bring about peace in our own lives.
And I want to uh, challenge you to also 